Hey everyone, it's finally here. We now have complete white label for Socialmonials. And the reason you would want to use this, a um, couple of reasons. If you're an agency, you would want to impress your clients with your own proprietary logins where they can log into your software, not log into Socialmonials and potentially go around your back to license with us. Um, and also it allows you to have a dashboard for them to log into that continually gets your brand in front of their eyes so they can see re real-time reporting coming from you. Um, and now all the email communications uh, for workflows will also come from you. Um, so it will appear like you guys are really on top of things even though it's all happening behind the scenes, completely automated through our software. Um, the second reason you'd want to use this is for end user management. And this is something that would benefit not only agencies but the clients you serve and also our brand clients who are not agencies they just want to have a really great software that automates quite a few tasks um, and makes them look like superheroes in front of their end user accounts so i'm going to show you how to set up white labeling i'm going to show you a little more about um, the different levels of white labeling and how it pertains to your particular situation um, i'm going to start off with agencies you know we've made a real commitment to agencies and we're going to continue to make this the best software for agencies because every time we improve the agency solution it also trickles down to those brands that are out there just trying to crush it on social so we continue to focus on making this um, a great agency experience so let's start there there are three different users of socialmonials uh, one is the account owner and that's the person who basically pays the Socialmonials um, registration fee, either bought a code, registration code, or they're paying every month. That is the account owner. Um, there is a sub-user, and these are all of the different people you create user accounts for within each of your workspaces. Um, and that tends to be the client um, contacts that you have and also employees that work for your agency. We're gonna talk about that user group. And the third group is end users. And these are the thousands of people that sign up for your sweepstakes, for example, or that um, add their photo to your photo contests. That's the end user group. So let's start with account owner. Um, there is no white labeling necessary for account owners um, because you are doing business with us. So communications that go to account owners would be things like, here's a receipt for your payment for socialmonials. Um, and you are going to log in um, at socialmonials.com. Um, <clears throat> moving on to the next group, which is sub-users. This is what an agency would want to use to, um, like, for example, give out a username and password to one of your clients. Your client would now see this. You're looking at um, your agency login, and as soon as you sign up with an SMT, or I'm sorry, a um, custom domain, you're going to be using that same domain to actually log into your account. So when you give, like, let's say you create a client user account for Pepsi username with password Pepsi, um, that Pepsi client would actually go to your agency domain to log in. Um, so if your agency is called Acme Agency, you might have app.acmeagency.com. Once they go there, they will be presented with this screen. They would enter Pepsi here, Pepsi and the password, and then they would sign in. So the full experience from start to finish is going to be branded Acme Agency and not Socialmonials. Even the HTML, our OG tags, even our um, meta tags do not mention Socialmonials, so people won't know um, who it is. So for sub-users like that who are logging in, um, they're going to experience a fully branded login. Also, when they sign in, it is going to show your agency. So you'll notice that this looks a little different than our normal software. That's because we've customized it, um, customized the look and feel. Um, so you can't, it's not just um, changing up the domain, it's also changing up the look and feel, the brand. As you can see, we've added an agency logo here and I'm going to show you next how to do this. Um, first thing you want to do is jump over to your agency dashboard and click over to white label and we've added some extra things here. You're probably familiar already with the favicon, the custom logo, colors and fonts. 
Um, custom domain is where you would activate acmeagency.com. Um, so you would enter your custom domain here and be sure to follow these setup instructions. For other settings, if you want to completely white label it, you might want to change the tutorial videos that we offer at the very top of the software under help. You can change it so these go to your own assets if you want to be the one that provides um, that kind of tutoring to your end users, your clients. Um, that's where you would customize it. And here you have custom email server. This is something we've just added. This is where you would add your SMTP settings for your custom server. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Mailgun account, which is a completely free SMTP email server. Um, they offer up to 10,000 emails per month, which should be more than enough um, to correspond with all of the sub-users in your account on a monthly basis. And as you can see, they will come directly from your domain, whatever that domain may be. So um, moving on to the next group of users, that would be the end users. The place to add end users is going to be account preferences. And this is for agencies or just brands that are using our software. If you go down to custom campaign domain, uh, many of you have already done this. Uh, you can purchase a custom subdomain. And the cost for this is $95 one-time fee, um, or you can pay uh, for an enterprise upgrade, and then it is completely free. To do this, you would just click custom uh, domain down here instead of a custom subdomain enter your custom domain and be sure to follow the setup instructions here to do that. The email part is right up here under email notification preferences. So what we've also done is given you the opportunity to add an SMTP server for your end users. And this is where it gets a little more complicated because remember I just showed you an SMTP server setup. So let me explain the difference. We call these campaign notification emails that you're customizing in this view. Um, this would be things like if somebody signs up for one of your sweepstakes, you probably want to send them an automated email notification that says thank you for signing up. That is a campaign notification email and that will come from the brand. So if the brand is Pepsi, it's going to come from campaign at pepsi.com, whatever you want that email to be, you can do that and just be sure to set it up here. And a company like Pepsi would already have an SMTP server. They would provide you those credentials so you can add it to their particular workspace. Um, also, for example, um, if you if somebody at Pepsi, like if, if one of their customers submitted a picture of them drinking a Pepsi and um, you approved that picture or if your client which is Pepsi, approve that um, photo, then it would send a follow-up email to that end user saying, thank you for submitting that picture, we have approved it, and it now appears on our microsite and our Facebook page, for example. That's just another example of another email notification that might come out of this particular setup. Now to contrast that with sub-users, we call these workflow emails. So let's say you are a Pepsi brand manager who logs into your dashboard, you know, this is what you would see, and you post to social media, for example. So you go ahead and you send a social media post to your Pepsi account. And you have it set up in your particular workflow to have the end user, which is Pepsi, send a post, then it goes to your employee to approve well, your employee is going to receive an email from Acme Agency. So it might say um, agent at acmeagency.com. And that email might say, hey, here's a post from Pepsi. Click here to approve it. Conversely, if you have your workflow set up where an agent at your agency, an employee at your agency is sending these posts and it's set up to be approved by the brand manager over at Pepsi, it would work the opposite way, where your employee would fill this out, they would send the post, and it would automatically, social monials will automatically send an email from acmeagency.com to your contact over at Pepsi. And they would approve that through uh, an interface that was branded for your agency 
um, and then that email would come back to you letting you know that they approved it. So again, the full experience, all the communications going to any of those um, agency contacts as a part of the workflow will come from Acme Agency. So that's the difference uh, between the campaign notification emails and the workflow emails. <clears throat> so even something like if they had posted and something went wrong with the post and it said, hey, you know, we just tested, uh, tried to verify that post and something went wrong, please click here and send the post again. Even email notifications like that will come from Acme Agency. Nothing will come to that sub user from Socialmonials. So that's how the white labeling works. Um, the most tricky part of this is setting up your SMTP server. And now I want to show you how to set up the SMTP server. The good news is it's exactly the same process if you're setting it up in account preferences for your campaign notification emails, or if you're setting this up as an agency under the white label tab of your agency dashboard, which is over here. So I'm going to show you how to set it up for the end user over in the account preferences now. Um, just know that, follow that exact same process over here in the white label tab when you're ready to set it up for your agency dashboard, and it would be in this section here. And by the way, um, as I've mentioned many times before, the white labeling is only available for agencies that have at least five workspaces. That means five um, accounts or five account registration codes. That's it. Now enjoy um, watching how we set up a complete Mailgun account and how we attach those SMTP settings to your Socialmonials account. To set up a white label email, you're going to need to have some sort of SMTP access. And SMTP, that can be available through a separate service or even through your domain provider probably. If you already have a domain and you own that domain, um, there are ways of setting up SMTP with that as well. And you'll need to contact your, your domain um, provider for that. Um, for purposes of this demo, I'm going to use a free service called Mailgun. I really like this service. They're easy and quick to set up. They give you your first 10,000 emails completely free each month. So as long as you don't send more than 10,000 a month, you're fine. And it's highly unlikely that you will be. That's a lot of notifications. So the way to set this up is let's just jump over to Mailgun. I'm going to let you go to Mailgun.com and you know, figure out how to sign up for the actual account. I've already done that, and I'm going to skip to um, some important steps. Okay, Once you get your domain or you get your account set up, you're going to click on Domains, and you're going to add a domain. This is one of our test domains. It's called extrahugs.com. <clears throat> I recommend putting a mail in front of it. So if your company is extrahugs.com, you would add a domain, mail.extrahugs.com, by clicking this green button up here. Once this is added, it's going to ask you to do a couple of verifications um, that you need to place on your domain provider's website. Um, and the nice thing is that Mailgun has instructions, very specific instructions, on how to do that for each of the popular domain providers. Once this is done, you're going to jump down to Domain Settings. And this is where your SMTP credentials are provided. So click on SMTP Credentials. Now I'm going to bring back Socialmonials, and I'm just going to move this window over a bit and show you where to put all these different fields. So first thing you're going to do is jump over to Account Preferences and click on Email Notification Preferences then select use your mail server instead of the use our mail server which is the default setting for the smtp server that's smtp.mailgun.org and that's provided right here should be the same for you um, use port 587 use encryption tls and i recommend just pausing this video go to open your mailgun account and um, grab your credentials and you can kind of compare it with what I have here when it's time for you to set up your account. Um, continuing on, you want to check SMTP auth, authorize username, 
where you get this postmaster at mail.extrahugs is, is right here. So where it says login on the left, that's where this goes. Your authorized password, this is located um, when you first set up your SMTP credentials, it's going to give you your password, and it doesn't show that anywhere except for right when you set up the password. So I won't be able to reveal that password here. But if you need to reset it, you always can, which is really convenient. Um, default sender name. You can make this anything you want. Um, you know, this might be customer service or marketing or sales, um, and that will be the sender, or it can even be your company name. The default sender slash reply to email. This should always be something that's on the same domain. Like notice how I have extrahugs.com here. If I have an account for extrahugs.com domain, and then I set my reply to email as, you know, george.com, you're not going to have very good deliverability because when it gets there, they're going to say, hey, wait a minute, this is coming from Extra Hugs server, but this is coming from Reply to George. Are they trying to spoof us? And they just might throw that in spam. So I always recommend using the same domain. And whatever you use here, again, this can be something like, you know, campaign at Extra Hugs. This can be help or campaign at extrahugs.com. The important thing to note here is that this is just a default where where it's actually determined is inside your campaign. So when you go and edit your campaign, there is going to be a setting in the settings step where you can set up your own email notifications. And as you're editing those email notifications, there's a place at the top that says sender name and sender reply to email. It's going to pre-populate your defaults, but you can always change that. So if you have different clients you're managing from within your account, you can have a different sender name and reply to email for each one of those clients. Just note that you're only going to be able to have the one domain um, that's connected to your overall account. So it's really better to do uh, one domain per workspace um, if you have an agency uh, workspace set up with social monials. So moving on, uh, once you've already added all of this, this is when you're going to send yourself a test email. So just enter your own email address, click send. It's going to send it to your inbox, make sure it looks OK. And when it does, you're all set. From now on, whenever you launch a campaign, it's automatically going to use these credentials. That's it. 